a mystery interstellar object that was spotted by astronomers last week. It could be the oldest comet ever seen. It's the only the third time that we've actually detected an object that has come from... And just occasionally you'll find the odd comet floating out there in deep freeze. Simply waiting for something to happen. Observational networks grew frantic. Data from Hawaii's PanStars, Chile's Vera Rubin Observatory, and a patchwork of smaller telescopes painted the same picture. Too many comets, too soon, all on paths that seemed suspiciously aligned. Veteran astronomers whispered to colleagues that they had never seen such a clustering. What was supposed to be rare was now routine, and that very routine felt like an omen. Normally, a comet is celebrated as a rare guest in the night sky, a bright wanderer carrying with it both beauty and a reminder of our place in the cosmos. This surge, however, was different. It carried the weight of dread. Each new detection felt less like a discovery and more like a warning. Patterns appeared where randomness should reign, and the timing between arrivals was so compressed that some scientists wondered if they were witnessing the beginnings of a cosmic cascade event. For NASA and the European Space Agency, the moment of crisis came quickly. At first, official statements brushed off the concern. A few comets, they said, were nothing unusual, but as detections mounted, a press conference was hastily organized. Cameras flashed. Scientists stood at the podium with expressions that betrayed unease. The words delivered were bland. We are continuing to observe. There is no imminent danger. Yet the subtext was clear. They did not know why this was happening, and their silence spoke louder than their reassurances. Behind the scenes, leaked memos painted a sharper picture. Teams were told to prioritize comet tracking above routine surveys. Emergency coordination calls were scheduled across agencies. Amateur astronomers, often free of bureaucratic filters, began posting orbital simulations online that showed something chilling. Some of the comets seemed to arrive as if they had appeared from nowhere. They had not been observed inbound at great distances, but instead blinked into visibility at positions much closer than expected. It was as if their arrival had been masked or delayed until a particular moment. The more the data accumulated, the more impossible it became to maintain the old explanations, the familiar categories, Oort cloud fragments, random interstellar debris did not fit anymore. Something else was happening, and in science, when data defies models, imagination rushes in to fill the void. Some whispered that nature alone could not explain this. Others quietly asked the question too dangerous for a microphone. What if this was not natural at all? Energy signatures offered no comfort. Observations of Atlas companions suggested radiation outputs in gigawatt scales, impossible for frozen balls of ice and dust. Swan 25's tail, instead of forming a predictable arc, expanded into a luminous fan that spanned multiple degrees across the night sky, brighter than the brightest calculations had predicted. Other comets, faint and fragile in appearance, showed accelerations inconsistent with gravity alone. It was a familiar puzzle. Oumuamua's strange course had caused the same debates, but now it was no longer an isolated case. It was a repeating signal. Speculation grew, and one hypothesis refused to die. If these were not random, what if they were probes? The Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, who had already argued that Oumuamua might have been artificial, doubled down. The synchronized arrival, the odd chemistry, and the unexplained energy all, he argued, fit a profile of coordinated deployment. Perhaps these objects were fragments released by a larger parent craft something that had entered the solar system unnoticed and seeded it with smaller bodies masquerading as comets. Others resisted. Michio Kaku urged caution, suggesting that an interstellar collision could have dislodged a cluster of icy bodies at once, sending them on similar trajectories. Or perhaps an unseen disturbance in the Oort cloud had triggered a cascade effect, like billiard balls scattering across the galaxy, but even he admitted the timing felt unnatural. The odds of so many objects converging so tightly within a single decade were astronomically low. History added a darker layer. Ancient chronicles from China, Babylon, and medieval Europe all spoke of sudden appearances of green-tailed comets that coincided with upheaval, plagues, invasions, collapses of empires. To historians, these were superstition. But to astronomers mapping cycles, some saw a rhythm. Roughly every 2,000 years, great comets appeared together, changing skies and sowing chaos. Swan 25's trajectory, when backtracked, seemed to align with one such ancient cycle. Was this a coincidence, or were civilizations before us already haunted by the same arrivals? 
Governments noticed. The Pentagon convened urgent meetings. ESA quietly reassigned defense liaisons to its space desk. In China, the Long March rocket program was suddenly retuned for rapid launch capability, a move that puzzled analysts until whispers linked it to comet interception. SpaceX and Blue Origin executives were called into classified briefings, asked whether they could adapt their rockets for planetary defense, missiles not aimed at Earth, but at space itself. Yet for all this activity, the public heard only silence. NASA repeated the same line, ongoing observation, no threat. The White House issued a single sentence statement about normal celestial phenomena. ESA simply said, no comment. Requests for raw web space telescope data were declined. The absence of information was information in itself, and it fueled a storm of paranoia. Online forums exploded with theories. Some claimed the comets were harbingers, signs of a reckoning written in the stars. Others insisted they were weapons disguised as natural debris, a kind of celestial Trojan horse. A few dared to suggest they were messages, signals from an intelligence that chose comets as its medium. The diversity of speculation was less remarkable than the unanimity of fear. Everyone agreed, something was happening, and no one in power was willing to explain it. Leaked documents deepened the unease. They spoke of satellites being quietly retasked. Interceptor concepts rushed from paper to prototype, and even nuclear contingencies drafted not for use, but as a deterrent, a signal to whoever or whatever might be watching. The measures sounded less like preparation for random ice balls and more like mobilization against an adversary. The fear was not of impacts, but of intention. October loomed large on every chart. Multiple comets were scheduled to sweep near the sun within days of each other, their paths crossing in ways no recorded history could parallel. Astronomers warned of the unpredictable, collisions, gravitational deflections, or synchronized flybys that could alter orbits in dangerous ways. The solar system itself felt less like a stable clockwork and more like a chessboard in the middle of a match we had not chosen. And always the larger question returned. If nature had not arranged this, who had? If coincidence could not explain it, was coordination the only answer left? Humanity stood at a crossroads between scientific humility and existential dread. Was this the universe reminding us of its chaos, or another intelligence announcing itself through spectacle and fear? The countdown ticked on. Nights grew brighter with unfamiliar tales. Children stared up and asked questions parents could not answer. Cities dimmed their lights so people could watch the strange visitors streak across the sky. For once, the world shared a single horizon and a single uncertainty. A surge of giant comets was here, converging together like an ancient story retold. The truth remained locked behind data the public could not see, but the feeling was undeniable. Something had sent them, whether chaos or design. And until the sky revealed its answer, Earth could only wait. In the absence of answers, speculation hardened into conviction. For many, the sheer improbability of so many arrivals could not be explained by chance. If the comets were natural, they would be scattered, lonely, uncoordinated. But this surge felt organized, deliberate, as though responding to a schedule written far beyond human calendars. And once that idea took hold, it spread faster than any official statement could contain. Conspiracy theorists claimed governments had known about this alignment for decades, suppressing old records and ancient prophecies that described the same cosmic visitors. Some even tied the events to secret space programs, suggesting that humanity had already encountered whoever was behind these comets and was now preparing for their return. Theories ranged from the plausible to the wild, but the underlying fear was always the same. Earth was being watched. Mainstream scientists fought to keep the conversation grounded. They emphasized that comets were still icy rocks, fragile objects that often broke apart under solar heating. They reminded the public that every unusual feature, whether an unexpected brightness or a strange trajectory, could have a natural explanation once enough data was gathered. But even as they spoke, the anomalies piled up. Each attempt at reassurance sounded more like denial. At observatories around the world, graduate students and veteran astronomers alike sat through sleepless nights, charting the new arrivals. Some whispered that the orbits seemed too clean, too stable, as if someone had calculated them for dramatic effect. Others noticed subtle deviations that made prediction almost impossible, as though the comets were adjusting themselves in tiny, imperceptible ways. Such thoughts were rarely written into official logs, but they circulated quietly, growing heavier with each passing week. 
Meanwhile, ordinary people responded in their own ways. Some flocked to remote locations where the comets blazed brightest, treating the surge as a cosmic festival. They camped in deserts, climbed rooftops, and gathered with telescopes and cameras, determined to witness history. Others turned inward, filling churches, temples, and mosques with prayers for protection. For them, the sky was not a stage, but a warning. Faith and fear blurred into the same gesture of looking upward. Economies trembled. Insurance companies debated how to price risk when no one could guarantee the comet's paths. Stock markets wavered as rumors of impending catastrophe spread. Airlines reported surges in bookings for one-way tickets to remote islands, fueled less by logic than by the primal instinct to escape. Politicians tried to calm the panic, but their forced smiles only deepened the suspicion that something was being hidden. The media, caught between caution and sensation, oscillated wildly. Some outlets framed the comets as natural wonders, emphasizing their beauty and rarity. Others leaned into darker narratives, running stories that hinted at cover-ups and cosmic conspiracies. Across platforms, one theme dominated, the sense that the world was standing at the edge of an event larger than itself, with no power to change its course. As October neared, the sky itself seemed to tighten. Each night, new streaks appeared, their tails shimmering against the black void. The patterns grew impossible to ignore. Children drew pictures of glowing comets in school. Artists painted canvases filled with fire and light. Musicians composed songs inspired by the looming spectacle. Culture absorbed the fear and fascination, weaving it into every expression of human imagination. And yet, beneath the spectacle, silence endured. Governments kept their secrets. Agencies withheld data. Telescopes showed truths that never reached the public, and the comets kept coming, steady as clockwork, bright as omens. What force sent them? What message did they carry? Earth waited, searching the heavens for an answer that refused to be spoken aloud. The nights grew colder, yet the sky burned brighter. Astronomers warned that the real test was still to come, perihelion, the moment when the comets would swing closest to the sun. At that distance, many might disintegrate, but others could survive, altered, redirected, or even propelled into new trajectories that would cut across Earth's orbit. It was the uncertainty that unsettled most. Predictions varied wildly, and every model seemed to collapse under the weight of unknown variables. In quiet conversations, scientists admitted a deeper fear. If the comets were artificial, perihelion might not be their end, but their beginning, a trigger point for whatever purpose lay hidden within them. No one dared say it on record, but the thought lingered like a shadow. What if these were not visitors, but instruments waiting for activation? Humanity could only watch, count the days, and brace for what the heavens might unveil. 